True Lies Season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Public Secrets. Now, spoilers for the episode leading up to and including this one and the film that the show is based on. So, the... right. Once again, absolutely love this episode. I will be making some jokes at the episode's expense. They're not meant as, like, criticism. I'm just having fun. So, yeah, we get our first glimpse of the intro, which, of course, you know, as usual, happens after the pilot because it's, you know, the pilot sets up the the status quo. The, the intro for future episodes reiterates the status quo and the, yeah... I like that the, you know, the narration, like, we've heard before, you know, I put a burn notice season behind me. We've heard, you know, spy show being introduced by the lead male spy saying his name and saying for so and so many years, you know, in this one, not only does Helen, you know, because she's also one of the spies, not only does she, you know, join in. But she actually kind of argues with it, you know, she's, I thought we were, uh, honey, those were, you know, what was it, those were also truths, they were just, they, they weren't lies, they were just true lies, which, you know, I mean, that's, that's one way to justify the, the title of the, you know, it, it never really made much sense, true lies, you know, and it's not even, like, it's not like a direct translation of the, title of the French movie that the movie was based on, so, yeah, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask James Cameron, I guess, why he thought the True Lies made sense for the movie. And I gotta say, I did clock the fact that it was a test, the, the laser thing, immediately, but, like, it didn't take forever to get there. You know, of course it's just a, a test, you know, and, yeah, um, can't really have a high-tech spy thing without someone dodging lasers, so, you know, yeah. And, and the, you know, okay, so it was a little gross that, you know, L Luther, you know, chokes her, and they're like, should we, should we stop? But, you know, I do appreciate, you know, when, once he stops, he's like, I just want to point out, I was only doing what the manuals, I, that, that would have been a pretty good place that, you know, in the movie, Harry smacks one of the guys for smacking Helen. I, th I think it would have been, but then, you know, if it's, you know, considering that Luther is part of the team, you'd have an, an issue there, but, yeah. And the, yeah, you know, Helen failed the test. She She did hit the laser, and she ended up just having to tap out. She couldn't get her way out of, you know, Despite my better judgment, I did briefly look at reviews, and apparently some people are calling her a Mary Sue. You know, okay, I've only watched two episodes so far, but she's done something that she shouldn't in both of them. You know, in this one, she fails two tests in a row. In the first episode, she, like, drove a hundred miles in this, like, really crowded area. You know, just, like, she's not a Mary Sue. She makes mistakes. You know, I'm maybe something happens later in the season. I realize, you know, I'm getting to this kind of late. Disney Plus got to it kind of late, but I guess it's possible that later. But certainly in these first two episodes, she is not a Mary. So I guess I'll I'll try to keep an eye on, keep an eye out for that in later episodes. But so far, what it's looking like is. Some men just don't know any other way to criticize a female character. It's not as though there's nothing wrong with, you know, like, it kind of just shows that you're bad at criticism. If that's your criticism of a character that's clearly not a Mary Sue, is to call her a Mary Sue, like, kind of seems like you just, you're just looking for something to criticize ab about the character, you know, and, and you don't, you can't come up with any actual criticism, so you just repeat something you heard someone else say, even if it makes no sense. But yeah, you know, they're giving Helen her first mission, and she said, you know, isn't this kind of going a little too fast? And Beverly D'Angelo says, 
No, if we were, if we wanted to really push you, we would drop you in North Korea with a pocket knife and a list of targets. Yon Hell's like, oh, that's not a joke. That's that's a joke, right? And he's like, no, nobody, no. She's the only person in the room who thinks that might be a joke. That's that's apparently something that Beverly Danjo would like. I mean, I guess that does. Yeah, okay. She's either gonna that that will definitely be a trial by fire. She's either gonna get rid of those targets or she's gonna be captured, and all they have is a list of targets, not any, not something they could trace. Now uh, they continue to keep exposition to a minimum and try to make as much of it visual as possible. I appreciate because you know we do yeah two episodes two scenes of like the the mission briefing. And, yeah, Helen goes because of her expertise with languages, and she explains it's like the Coachella of languages. It's, you know, yeah, good reference. And, let's see, I, I like the, the, them talking at the, at the dinner table, and Helen and Harry having to keep it, you know, secret. And also the, the you know, I think it was the, the son, um, J Jake, I think his name is. Yeah. Jake said, you've been a language teacher for a million years. That's very much something that, a, like, a teenager would, would say. And, yeah, you know, she said, Helen says to Harry, I thought this would, meant we could stop lying to, you know, lying to each other. Now we, we have to lie to everybody else, you know. And... So yeah, she's she's a little on the neurotic side. They're not like going full like extreme neurotic, but she's a little on the neurotic side. And yeah, Harry does not want to tell Helen about Jimena. And they realize that Dana is hiding something. I love they you know both the the script and the acting of Ginger Gonzaga, she they, they they give her some great lines. Harry, it could be dangerous. She's burning popcorn right now. That's yeah, and and that again, that's like that yeah. She is she is a mom. That is that is a mom kind of thing to say. So that's yeah, and yeah. Harry is aware that, you know, this kind of stuff. It's not that he doesn't care, like in the movie. It's that he knows, you know, there's not really anything he can do about it. And he doesn't want to to worry about, you know, it's like, so, you know, she apparently got a vape. She's vaping? No, no, she she stopped, you know. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, so, so he's like, let's try not to worry about it. Meanwhile, Helen is like full, like, dare or just say no. She's like... You know, vaping leads to crack cocaine. Just yeah. Um. Yes, we would like you to watch our daughter. Yeah, just yeah. And yeah, we meet Harold the ex, and just you know he's he's really really smart, and he's the the kind of person that you figure oh that's that's who Helen would would want. You know, so there's. Just and and they speak Swahili together, which is you know like it's a real language, but it's like if you check you, like if you meet an average white guy, they probably don't know. You know, obviously I'm not I'm not talking about Ginger. I'm talking about Harry himself. You know, very white, so he of course has no idea. He he can't even say, "Oh, you were speaking Swahili." I, I don't understand it, but I can recognize Swahili when I hear it. No, 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 he has no idea. Like, if she said, you know, no, we were speaking Bulgarian, you know, <laughs> maybe he'd know it wasn't Bulgarian, but he wouldn't be able to say Swahili. So, you know, that was, and, and, I, I feel like it's, it's, it is basically a cringe joke. Usually I don't like cringe humor, but I've, I really worked when, you know, Harold turns to Harry and says, so, Harry, are you also in academia? And, and Harry's like, no, I sell computers. And Harold, like, you know, just starts laughing and it, 
amazing. You know, <laughs> for a second he thinks, oh, that's the funny, oh, I knew Helen would end up with someone who had a sense of humor about it. Oh, my, can you imagine, can you imagine Helen settling for someone who sells compute? Oh, wow. Just, do you do improv? Because that is just, you know, I want to, I want to book you. That's really, really fun. Just, yeah. And, and the others, you know, Harry and Helen are like, yeah, that was not a joke, dude. <laughs> and, yeah, the, the, you know, Helen is like, I, I don't want you to feel threatened. I, I am, I am not threatened, you know. I, I really appreciate, you know, you can... One of the problems with the movie is it's so one-sided. We're, we're supposed to laugh at her humiliation. His humiliation never reaches the heights of hers. But here, you know, literally in the same episode, both of them are, like, they feel threatened by an ex. And that's actually, you know, that's not just a, like, a spy thing. That's a very normal human thing. You know, a, lo a lot of people feel uncomfortable about, you know, they, they worry, you know, if, if the, you know, am I good enough for my current partner, you know, would they rather go back to this other person, you know, so, yeah, and the thing, you know, and she says, I, I know that sometimes things get weird when you feel like someone is smarter than you, and then he says, I, oh, so he's smarter than me. It's like, that is not what she said. She said you felt like that. She was not making the declarative statement that Harold is smarter than you. But, you know, that's, the, the, yeah, that's male insecurity, the, the fragility of the male ego, which I continue to believe is the single most frail substance in the not just the known universe, but the theoretical multiverse. Even time travel, just there's no way. It is it is wet tissue paper. You know, and I'm not saying I'm above that kind of thing either. It's just yeah, and you know, as he's like, okay, yeah, this was this was the weirdness that I was talking about. And yeah, so there's a couple of times where Jimena is shot very male gaze. But ultimately, you know, she is a full character. She's not just, you know, like, the moment you just see her, like, they could easily, you know, if you stop it there and think, you you might go, oh, she's just going to be the temptress. You know, that's the whole thing. No, but she actually, you know, you know, you could, for sure, she is basically defined by what she means to Harry and Helen and their current relationship. But she's not just the temptress. She's not just there to, you know. And, yeah, so four ILF guys are coming in. There are too many civilians for a firefight. Also, our budget is too low. And this time we have a Bulgarian terrorist. So... Yeah, again, I appreciate, you know, not a not a part of the world that is, like, constantly really, you know, yeah, you gotta be careful who you, who you cast as a, as a terrorist. And, you know, Helen wants to see the, the pictures of Harry and Jimena, and, you know, they manage to, because it's not video, and, and, you know, why would they need video? They're just, you know, so... The pictures are when, like, it looks, you know, yeah, I guess basically the, the yeah, the, so it's the cheek kiss, the the very professional lob lobster? Crap, I'm, I'm no good with, with seafood. I think it was lobster. Lobster feeding, and the, the when he when he picks up Jimena to, to get her into, you know, we saw the the it actually play out so we saw that you know when the the kiss you know he's a little uncomfortable about it and he actually turns down the the lobster feeding but you can't tell from the you know so so just yeah and the no wait not lobster crap i, f I forget what it's called um i'm gonna keep saying lobster because it's i think it started to to just be funny how wrong that is
you know the the yeah you know he's like she she's trying to to feed him and he's like okay can we can we get down to business you know and he only picks her up so that he can get her into the the um the passageway so she can climb out you know but yeah you know if you don't know those things it looks really bad and we hear that Dana's you know, we hear some details about Dana's boyfriend, you know, he is 18, which, you know, yeah, um, so, so, uh, I think, was it, was it said, um, I, I'm almost certain that she isn't, that Dana is, like, maybe 17 or 16 or something like that, so, you know, the fact that she's with an 18-year-old, you know, that makes, of course, the parents think, you know, he's going to have expectations, you know, and the, the you know, he's like, I'm trying desperately to not think of rhyme, of words that rhyme with zoner, you know, and, oh, he was arrested when he was 16, and they threw it away because he was a minor, you know, and... Uh, you know, and and the the bong, and I love you know, Miss Myers saying you know for a water pipe, commonly known as, and as she says the word bong, you know Helen mouths it like she already knew oh bong, you know, and just yeah, very very funny, yeah, and the you know oh and tube top and just, yeah, and it's also just it's very funny the it's a great contrast that she's like she's talking about. Subject received communications, you know, and and meanwhile the, you know, it's it's two teenagers who wanna, you know, go hang out because the parents are out of town, you know, it's, it's, you know, these, yeah, just this this contrast between, yeah, and and you know, at the end of the episode they bring up, you know, okay, so Meyer said there's nothing that should like, you know, there's there's nothing that they need to know. But there is definitely some stuff that would, what was it, upset them, I think was the word she used. So, something like that, you know. So, should they respect her privacy? Because, you know, I, I really appreciate, you know, that, that never even comes up in the movie. It's like, of course we shouldn't respect this woman's privacy. Let's see. And... You know, to Helen wants revenge over not being told about Jimena, so of course she's gonna go have some very professional champagne with Harold. And the things they say in the in the van do not, in fact, cheer up Harry at all. Let's see and. Look at her, it's like she's immune to helmet hair. I remember the first time I got shot out of cannon. And yeah, so the Isla followed Jimena and the the you know the yeah, their van is like armored. I don't know, is it just me or are Luther and Maria not super necessary so far oh okay actually yeah at the end of near the end of this episode they do manage to help harry shoot yeah they shoot three of the four ilf guys so so that's one thing at least but other than that so far they really have not really justified why they needed to expand the team you know yeah so the hopefully they will address that in one of the next episodes I don't mind that they expanded it, but it feels a little like, you know, when, when a movie gets turned into a TV show, like, a lot of TV shows have larger casts, you know, an ensemble cast kind of thing, so, yeah, you know, it kind of feels like that's what they're doing, and that's, that's fine, but I, I, I hope to see it justified more in, in future episodes as all. And... <laughs> What's the Bulgarian word for chicken? You don't say chicken. Please tell me you're not playing chicken with an armored car. You know, just... I did think that the fire... Like, you know, he, he does... You know, he slides the, the motorcycle, and it just immediately catches fire, and it spreads ridiculously quickly to the van. That felt kind of... 
you know, that's one of my only criticisms of this episode. And Myers calls, and Dana is wearing the top, looks like normal tightness, and she gets into a muscle car with an unidentified boy, you know, just, yeah. And the ILF grabbed Harold, not Harry. Just, yeah, that was, that's a, that's a funny kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but this whole concept is ridiculous. You know, this thing of, like, spy Mary to a, a regular person, and then they go on spy missions together. It's, you know, this, this whole thing is kind of ridiculous, and I feel like this twist fits in. You know, it wasn't in the movie, but it fits. And, yeah, Helen has to go see Jimena, because, you know, of the, the, of all of the ones working for Omega Sector who are currently in, was it Italy or Spain, something like that, you know, she's not a really great shot, but... You know, like, obviously Gibbs is going to have to be part of the operation where they're getting the, um, what's it called? Getting Jimen, not, not, not Jimen, uh, hold on. Harold. Getting Harold out of trouble, you know, through the tech stuff. And you have the three with guns. Helen, you know, is the only person left to send to Jimena, and yeah. And they get into a fight because, of course, Jimena, you know, okay, so they go to a restaurant, ILF show up. They, you know, she, she goes to meet them, you know, and when, when Harry's in the van and she's on a motorcycle, ILF show up. You know, the, the yeah, it's a very logical conclusion to, the, you know, yes, she used a code, but I'm, I figure... I don't think she says this, but she probably figures, you know, maybe they got to Harry and, like, I'm sure he's had training, but, you know, eventually he couldn't withstand their, their torture anymore. Not that torture gets credible intel, but anyway, you know, so he eventually gave up the information and now they came to, to kill Jimena. And the fact that, you know, it's this fairly non-threatening looking, you know, Ginger Gonzaga, Gonzaga is not, like, incredibly intimidating in, in that kind of, you know, but that might be, like, a, you know, maybe it's to get Jimena to lower her guard, so so that's, yeah. Let's see, but but yeah, so they, they fight, and she gets grabbed to the hold, and, you know, we're sitting there thinking, I mean, they're on the same side, but she does really hate Jimena because of the the past. You know, she's she's Harry's ex. So is she gonna go for the eyes? And thankfully, she goes for the the ear instead. And <laughs> I found it funny when when Harry said, "I really don't want to die saving Helen's ex." <laughs> and and the you know, I'm I'm sorry I put you in a hole. Happens all the time. I mean, yeah, she's been a spy for a apparently very short amount of time so far. Already happened twice, so, yeah. And, you know, she keeps thinking, oh, this was like a love nest, so, you know, so you had, like, this was your love nest. Oh, no, we, we had no time. But, we, you know, we, we, we did kiss, and I was like, yeah, I knew, I knew it, you know, just... And the the, you know... Harry broke my heart. And I love the bit with, you know, at least he left me for a spy. I was worried he left me for some kind of suburban mom doing yoga and driving the kids to school. You know, it's, yeah, um, mm -hmm, certainly. And, yeah, then, you know, Jimena gets rid of the, the equipment and... Helen proves she is not a cool guy because she does look at the explosion. And that that was, again, a very funny... Like, Jimena is, like, all business. Like, I've done this before. I've walked away from a hundred explosions at least. You know, and Ginger's like, holy crap. Are, is, is this okay? Are, are we going to be... You know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jog a little bit just to... Just to just, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a little bit... 
you know, so that was, yeah. And, and, you know, later she says, oh, yeah, she said she was going to leave the life just very dramatic. <laughs> and I know, I know, I'm not, I get it. It's lampshading. They do a dramatic thing, and then they make a joke about doing the dramatic thing. I think it worked. And, yeah, you know, the, the three spies managed to shoot three of the ILF. And then, you know, okay, uh, Gib, I just need one second. Okay, I'll think of something. Um, I'm sorry, baby, I love you. And he flies the drone right into the head, which is such a great, like... Because <laughs> it's, again, like, it's this serious situation with, you know, he's pointing a gun at, at Harold, and the others had to put down their guns, you know, and and then, like, a, a drone bonks him on that. You know, it's not like he's hurt or something. There's not, like, blood trickling out or, or some kind of... Just, it's like, what was that? That was kind of annoying. Is someone firing... What do they call them? Uh, spit... Wad. Yeah, you know. Let's see. And, you know, we find out that it was Helen who broke up with Harold, not the other way around. And, you know, she didn't want someone who spoke 30 languages. She wanted someone who spoke her language. Which then, you know, after, you know, Harry's like, oh, so Harold, huh, speaks 30 languages. Yes, but not the one I wanted. Yeah, he mentioned that, you know, and, and, yeah, and actually, you know, the movie and reviews of the movie claim that they were strengthening the marriage. I call BS, but this show legitimately is, a, you know, they are strengthening the marriage, you know, so I really appreciate it. I, I, I'm going to be very impressed if they're going to, if they, if they are able to keep this up for the entire season, and I'm hoping for more than one season, but with such bad reception, I guess, maybe not, but yeah. And, yeah, she says, oh, I was, I was grabbed again, and, uh, you know, I got out of it, you know, and, and, yeah, it's, you know, this is my move. A wet willy is her move, but that is, yeah, you know, like, I mean, presumably it's been a while since she either administered or received one, but maybe it hasn't been that many years since, like, one of the kids either administered or received one. And, like, for some reason, it's stuck. Yeah, and she's, yeah, she's a cheat. Uh, wait, but she's, like, a high school cheat. Do, do high school kids still do wet willies? I don't know. I just feel like that's the kind of thing you should maybe grow out of before the end of, like, middle school. But, but anyway, yeah, you know, it's, it's completely credible that she knows what a wet willy is. And, like, yeah. You know, I'm. I can imagine that kind of thing would work, and and it's not like it wins the fight. It just she gets. You know, she's able to explain to her to to Jimena. You know, and and the thing she says, it does sound. You know, okay, so she. Yeah, you know, she she seems non threatening, and the things she's saying, you know, prove that she. You know, it was because she sold the pictures, but yeah. And. Yeah, then we end on the the issue of will they respect Dana's privacy, which is, again, like, that's a thing that actually comes up in, you know, that's a, that's a discussion that parents have with each other these days, you know, if I am worried that my teenager is doing something that I think they're going to regret and I think they might, you know, it might be really bad, should I look at her phone? You know, should should I check her phone, see who she called and when? Should I should I go through her text messages? Those kinds of things, you know. And yeah, it's you know, I appreciate that at the end of the episode. I don't know if we're actually gonna get follow up on it, but then I mean the first episode also the first episode established that she does she drinks beer. And this episode then had her going out to meet a boy. So yeah, I can imagine one of the future episodes will follow up on it. And and yeah, you know, both of them, like, they, on principle, they don't want to. They feel like she should, you know, they love her, they trust her, they want to respect her privacy. But, it you know, it is that thing of, 
I mean, you know, I, yeah, at one point in the episode, Harry did say something like, you know, you, you kept secrets, yeah, you didn't tell your mom everything exactly, you know, because that's, yeah, when, when, once you become a, a parent, like, you start to think, what did I do when I was, or, or maybe not do, but consider doing when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, so, you know, just the, yeah, and, you know, when you, if you, if you're a spy and your neighbor can listen in on phone conversations and, you know, this whole thing, it's obviously the issue is even more kind of, yeah, that, that adds another layer to that, that issue. So, yeah, absolutely loving his show so far. I, yeah, I'm really glad that, the, okay, so there's, what, there's 13 episodes in total. And let's see, I guess today the, the ninth one aired uh, on CBS. So, yeah. Um, I, I feel like, you know, I, I, yeah, I was also quite happy with Burn Notice, also by Matt Nix, so, yeah, um, yeah, right, I still don't, I don't have a, uh, like a, like an ongoing catchphrase for this one. I am the alpha to your omega.